Well, you guys asked for it. Over and over again I kept getting requests to make a list of fighting game boxers, but I always wanted to avoid it because, well, there's just too many of them. How am I supposed to select only a few to cover in this video while still maintaining the same in-depth style that I traditionally use for my lists? I know I have tackled similarly infinite topics before, but it's always best if I can find a way to squeeze most people's favorite characters in a video. This time though, I'm quite sure that, statistically, at least one of your preferred fighters is bound to be left behind. Nevertheless, I finally got one request too many and decided to venture into this broad topic. In an attempt to cover as many franchises as possible, I'll be limiting each series to only one boxer, while also trying to avoid characters that look too much like each other. The more distinct and unique they are, the better. No matter what I do though, it will still not even make a dent in the whole universe of fighting game boxers, so a bunch of fan favorites will have to wait for a possible sequel. There's just no way around it. I'm up for it if there's enough interest, so make sure to like and share this video with your friends if you want me to make a part 2 in the future. For now though, let's start with someone who I feel would be committing a crime against gaming culture if I fail to include in this video. Balrog from Street Fighter. Known in Japan as M. Bison, aka Mike Bison, Balrog is loosely based and designed after the real-life boxer Mike Tyson. The not-so-subtle reference in his name was altered when Street Fighter 2 reached the West, causing the boss characters, with the exception of Sagat, who had already appeared in the first Street Fighter game, to switch their names. After that, for most of the world, Street Fighter's most famous boxer became known as Balrog, and his original name, M. Bison was given to the evil dictator that serves as the game's last boss. Balrog is a tall, heavily built and very muscular African-American boxer. His most well-known outfit consists of blue boxing trunks and a torn white shirt under a blue tank top, besides red boxing gloves and boxing shoes. That, however, is no longer his default look after Street Fighter V. Balrog is generally self-centered, hot-tempered, arrogant and sadistic. He's an aggressive pugilist who possesses an insatiable urge for money and a vicious, bullying mean streak, often refusing to take responsibility for his actions. Despite being a once great prize boxer, Balrog has intentionally cheated in his fights whenever he felt like it, and has even killed one of his opponents, though by accident. His motivations for joining Shadaloo and M. Bison throughout the Street Fighter series have always been to attain massive wealth, fame and glory. As such, though Balrog would cheat, steal or even kill to this end, he is not evil so much as he is greedy, and takes little substantial interest in Shadaloo affairs otherwise. The only depiction of empathy and humanity in him is his relationship with Ed, showing that deep down he is capable of generally caring about someone. His moveset is almost entirely comprised of arm-based attacks, such as punches and elbow strikes. He will also resort to moves considered illegal in boxing whenever he sees fit, most noticeably his powerful headbutts. In previous games, Balrog was perhaps one of the most defense-oriented characters, with huge fast punches that kept opponent at bay. In Street Fighter V, though, he's very much an in-fighter. Attacks that were formerly long-range pokes are now largely fast and safe point-blank jabs, along with strong high-low mix-ups at close quarters. Any solid hit leads to big damage, much higher than the average character, sometimes to the point of stealing a round that was otherwise lost. He doesn't have much in terms of defense after suffering a knockdown though, and his tools have been all over the place with all the balance patches. While he remains a solid and viable character, he is currently not considered as powerful and dominant as he was in previous seasons. My next pick is, design-wise, a personal favorite of mine, even though he comes from a 3D fighting game franchise, which is not usually my cup of tea. It's Steve Fox from Tekken. Steve made his debut in Tekken 4, returning for all subsequent entries in the series. He's a young British boxer who was adopted as a child and whose origins long remain shrouded in mystery. Throughout the game, Steve's main objective has been to learn more information about his past, including the origin of the mysterious scar on his arm, and to get revenge against those responsible. Steve is the biological son of the assassin Nina Williams, his conception having been made synthetically by the Mishima Zaibats, while his mother was cryogenically frozen by Dr. Boskonovich between the events of Tekken 2 and 3. It is eventually revealed that the company ordered his creation in hopes of producing a new, more durable test subject for their experiments with the Devil Gene. 
However, when Steve was six years old, one of the project supervisors, Emma Cleason, grew too attached to the boy and faked his death in an experiment in order to allow him the chance to escape the laboratories. He was then brought to an orphanage and subsequently adopted by British parents, growing up to become one of the world's best middleweight boxing champions while having little to no memories of his past life. Steve is a polite and gentleman-like individual whose main motivation is to fight in the ring. He has very few enemies and has made many friends and friendly rivals throughout the series. Arguably though, the coolest thing about him is his gameplay. With a unique fighting style based on bobs, sways and punches and almost no kicks, Steve is one of the most unorthodox characters in the series. He has incredibly fast and effective punches and combos, very strong low attacks and can lay the pressure on his opponents like few others. Perhaps one of the most dangerous fighters in the roster, Steve can turn around a fight with his hard-hitting blows and high-low combos in a flash, and his counter hits are among the most effective around. Also, Steve's dodging capabilities are unrivaled by any other character in the series, if timed properly. Blind reliance on the static is very risky though, and going the wrong way might end up being a game-changing mistake. And now for the third character in my list, one of the first and few female boxers to date. It's Vanessa from The King of Fighters. First playable in KOF 2000, Vanessa, like Maxima before her, was created as a middle-aged fighter to contrast the multiple teenage characters in the roster, which was especially true in the case of females. Because of this, the developers came up with the concept of a woman in her 30s who broke all rules and overflowed with adult appeal. At 30 years of age, Vanessa is a normal housewife who secretly serves as a mercenary agent, Working under the orders of Commander Ling and alongside her fellow agent Seth, she is told to join the King of Fighters tournament held by Ling himself in order to follow the footsteps of the Nest Cartel. The two agents don't fight together though. While Seth joins Benimaru's team, Vanessa recruits prime suspects K Dash and Maxima, as well as the Mexican wrestler Ramon to form her group. After Ling's eventual defeat, Vanessa becomes a free agent, often teaming up with Ramon and Seth to fulfill her missions. Gameplay-wise, Vanessa is a fun character to use, with fast dashes that can quickly cover a lot of ground. Though single attacks won't hurt too much, she's more than capable of hitting the opponent with long combos that translate to big damage. On the downside, she's very reliant on meter for some of her best strings, and many of her attacks can leave Vanessa wide open on block. So now I move on to our fourth character, and I think it's time I throw you guys a bit of a curveball. It's Elias Patrick from Rage of the Dragons. If you watched my videos before, you must know Rage of the Dragons by now. I mean, it's not the first time that this game comes up in my list. If not, since this is a relatively unknown title, he's a really quick rundown. Originally conceived to be a sequel to the Neo Geo Double Dragon fighting game, Rage of the Dragons ended up at its own thing and it's actually a quite competent fighter. Really, you should check it out if you can. And one of the characters here is a boxer from Ireland called Elias Patrick, who also works as a traveling priest. He's a strict but well-meaning soul, who fights in the Lord's name and hopes to work for the good of others. Elias was born into a high-class, highly educated family who taught him to live a strictly religious life. He lost his faith after a family tragedy and, to make things worse, sometime later he was wrongfully imprisoned for a murder he did not commit. His religious faith, however, was restored by the jail's priest, who taught him the arts of exorcism and how to naturally tone his body. Many years later, when Elias was released, he decided to dedicate himself to saving people who meet misfortune in their lives. One day, Elias received a call from a client requesting his help with a girl named Alice, who was possessed by an awakened evil spirit. Concerned by the girl's condition, he faces the problem of removing the spirit without harming her. Elias believes the answer to Alice's troubles lies with Johan, who acts as the game's final boss. In terms of gameplay, he's a powerhouse that fights with his strength and long reach. His ability to drain his opponent's life increases his playtime, making him a sturdier character that doesn't need to tag out as often. Well, four down and only one more to go now. There is, of course, innumerable other fighting game boxers that I could pick for this spot, but I felt I would be doing a disservice to the highest selling fighting game in history if I didn't include one of its most recognizable fighters, even if I'm not particularly fond of the franchise. If you haven't guessed by now, we'll end this list with Little Mac from Super Smash Bros. 
originally the main protagonist in the Punch-Out series, Little Mac is a 17 years old Italian-American boxer that hails from the Bronx, New York. He's interested in getting into the World Video Boxing Association, which has a long history of rookie boxers joining the ranks in an effort to become world champions. Mac traveled to New York City in hopes of searching for someone that could train him, eventually meeting Jerome Doc Lewis, who was a former heavyweight champion in his own right. With Doc's help, Little Mac began his journey to the top of the world circuit, beating many other boxers standing in his path. Curiously, in his first game, he even fought Mike Tyson, though the famous boxer was eventually replaced by Mr. Dream in subsequent re-releases. In Super Smash Bros, Mac is a strong, fast, melee-based fighter that can make quick work of other fighters on the ground. By contrast, his aerial attacks and recovery moves are weak and cover little range, leaving him extremely vulnerable in the air. One of his unique attributes is his KO meter, a bar that builds up when Mac deals or receives damage. Once full, it alters Mac's standard special attack into the KO punch, an extremely powerful close-range uppercut that sends opponents flying, usually for a KO at higher damage. Little Mac can also transform into a much more powerful version of himself, Giga Mac, though the mechanics of how exactly that happens can vary from game to game. While some titles give the player control over the new form, in others Giga Mac only appears to perform a specific attack. So, well, that's it for now, guys. If you want me to make a part 2 of this list, remember to like and share this video with your friends, and make sure to leave your suggestions in the comment section below. But before I go, let me share with you some exciting news about another project I've been working on. Have you ever heard of Amino? It's an online social media app based on fandoms and communities, where you can make new friends with whom to share your love for your hobbies. I've recently partnered with Amino to produce content there, in the form of stories, which are very quick, to the point videos about all sorts of things. It's great because it allows me to try new things, post way more often, and cover subjects that perhaps wouldn't work as well as one of my traditionally longer videos. Sometimes I also get to try things there first, like for example my video about guest fighters for Samurai Showdown, which was an Amino story before being adapted to YouTube. So by all means, download the app and check for yourself. I'm at Kemi Player there, just like here. I'll be waiting for your visit. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and I'll see you guys later, probably to talk about the upcoming Street Fighter news. What do you think it's going to be announced?